Hello, it's Belligerent34, and I wanted to cover how to kite Boomer and some possible build ideas. What I'm running right now, I'm using the Firewall specialization in order to get the Striker Shield. The Striker Shield can do some pretty cool stuff. You know, as you can see, you know, it gives a damage buff to people, even yourself. You get pretty good shield mods. And I have the extra damage mod. And built into the class itself, um, anything that's within 10 meters of you, uh, your teammates will be doing extra damage too. And I kind of set this up as like a like a DPS support build. And I'm using my M1A Scorpio for the double down. Uh, using backpack with opportunistic on it. And I'm running the point man. Perfect vanguard. And you can see my stats. They're not terrible. Some of the pieces are pretty good. Alright, the Fox's prayers. Weapon damage isn't optimized, and neither is my crit chance here. But for the build, you could run, you, know, you could even use like the Matador, something with perfect adrenaline rush, anything with a adrenaline rush. Um, but you really just want something with a Vanguard. It doesn't have to be this. It could be a Providence piece, Grupo, Sesco, whatever. Um, and then you use, well, you could use whatever shield, but I like this one, because it's just more damage. So like for the build, that's about it. But then here's the more technical thing of how to kite Boomer, right? You would be on 41 would be taking first kite. And the guy that's over on 45, he's just gonna help shoot the nodes just like you are. And the way this works is on the right hand side, there'll be a little red bar that starts to fill up. You can kinda see it right now. If you fired about that much, you would have taken it down, you let it cool down. And then you take that second one down, pop your shield, and you would help kill ads on the way. And you get to about right here, and then Boomer starts to come out after all the ads are dead. Now what I do to get his eye is just shoot him in the leg. He'll start chasing you if nobody shoots him. Get to about right here. And then when he runs up to meet you, dump right through him, turn, pop his chest. That'll stun him a little and give the guy on 45 enough time to um, put him in a good spot to down him. You would switch to this. Right? And then when he's down, you hit him one, two, three, four, five. And then as he's about to stand up, you hit him that six time. It'll shock him. He'll still be standing up. They can hit him again in the backpack and get him down again. Just keep doing more damage to him. And after that, the guy that's on 45, you know, he would have he would have been on here laying into him. He's gonna get off and he'll kite Boomer. The easiest way to go is to follow these yellow things. Right, they lead you to the outside. But back here is a good spot to wait for him. Wait for his chest. Tag his chest. You gotta break it when it turns green. You get about here. And you're watching the computer screens for the for the letters. Based on how much damage you do, that's gonna be how many computers come up. You know, the first one or two is just, you know, first couple times it's gonna be one. Um, you know, how many times you double down, it could be two computers. You get in about three bars, it'll be three computers, but you get them at like two and under, it's going to be all four computers. But it's the same thing over here. You know, you bring them around here, the guy on 41 uh, shoots his backpack, you pop his chest as you need to, you know, get that shield out, you know, six shots, you know, and try to double down them, and then afterwards, you know, you follow follow the yellow stuff and bring them around the outside 
I keep looking back and see if his chest is starting to come up. Get here and wait for him. You know, watch his chest. And you roll. You know, get out of this thing. And hopefully he's down somewhere in this area. And it's just rinse and repeat. And then you're just, you know, looking at the computers. And if ads are in your way, you might have to stop and kill them. But that's pretty much the path. You just go around from 45 to 41, back this way to 45. That's all there is to it. You're popping your shield every time you count for Vanguard. And that's all there is to it. Here's another part that a lot of people seem to struggle with, especially starting out new, but jamming on Razorback. Uh, this is Dark Hours, final boss. This is the build that I use. Um, technically the jammer, or not technically, traditionally the jammer is a survivalist. You need to use the crossbow. And the weapons are entirely important, but you can use, you know, pretty much whatever. Assault rifles are good. The Scorpio is just for like if I get in trouble. I never really use my pistol, so it doesn't really matter. But the easiest way to put together a jammer build is four pieces of hardware. You want the backpack because of the short circuit there. It decreases that feedback loop from 20 seconds to 10. That's, uh, that's what helps you get your jammer back real quick. You put skill damage and skill haste. I mean, well, you put skill damage on all the pieces. All right. You use the BTSU gloves. And then I would recommend a wyvern chest piece. Glass cannon will absolutely ensure that you destroy those drones, no questions asked. For your mods, uh, you don't really need haste. You can even do repair skills. And here I got armor and kill. And you can even do texture from height. There's a lot of ways you can mod it however you want. But you use your jammer pulse. You got a max radius and as much vectoration as you can. And then revive it early to restore hive. Now you could probably get a you could try and run a booster with it. But generally people need healing more than they need the benefits of the booster. Just mod it, you know, healing, health, and the charges. And the way this works, and you always want to have a concussion grenade. This is the front side, okay? We have generator one. Normally, there would be a circle around this. It's called the plate. And usually, whoever's jamming will be like, okay, everybody get ready on plates. You know, count down three, two, one, and you get on your plates. This is basically your cover. Use it however you need to. Once the plates get charged to 100%, like around 75, 80%, you're getting your specials ready. This grate right here will open up and be a yellow bar. You have to hit inside right there. And that breaks it. Now on the other side, there's a dude, grenade, stuff in there. But if for some reason something happens, you can throw your grenade in here. You see how it kind of goes, yeah, you see how it's like up, up top like that? But if you went too high, the grenade would drop down. You need it to be right about like that. And it would turn, it would change that panel from red to green, and everything would be good. And then after you shoot the crossbow, right, you're immediately starting to jam. You just hold it, and boom, right? And then hopefully by then the plates disappear, it means the grenade and crossbow went into the back and front. You drop your hive and get it back. And the weak points will be coming out here. And you're looking for, like this part would be standing straight up, there's flaps. As soon as you see the flaps open, you just kind of come up to the middle. Push and hold it. Right, you're doing a lot of moving around, and you would 
You have to break this weak point. And you bring your hive over here. Right? Or help them on that one. You're watching for the drones again. But by that time, this is the safe area. You want to absolutely make sure you get here because you don't do shit for damage. And I always just do one more final pulse just in case there's any straight drones. And you pick your hive up. And you're helping your overwatches with whatever. Call them. I don't know if you see Boomer. They're waiting for Boomers to die. And you're like, okay, plates in three, two, one. You get back on your plates. And then it's rinse and repeat. You have to do it a bunch of times. You know, 75, 80 percent. You get ready. Everyone gets to 100. You shoot your crossbow. And you start jamming. You just make sure you don't ever leave your plate. When they disappear, then you can come up, drop your hive, and switch to your assault rifle, work on them, and then you're going to jam them again. Alright, and then you go get your hive. You know, once they break the weak points, you go to the other side, drop it, you get your pulse back. And then when it's, you know, you're doing damage up there, then you just make sure you get right here. That's pretty much the front. Right, and you just you help around, shoot ads, you run around, help people, you know, heal them. But in the back, when it's time to go to the back, you'll end up dropping your hive about here, and then you're going to have to pulse real quick. Alright, you pick it up. And then the safe spot back here is this truck. You do not want to be, like, sitting out here because the mortars target your center mass. But the explosion radius goes like about that far out and it still catch you. So you want to be like somewhere in the middle. Like the, if you're pretty much from here to there, somewhere in here, you'll be fine. You sit there for the two mortars and you just peel out, grab your hive, and you get ready for, you know, help and kill ads. Boomer gets killed, you get back on your plates, and then you do it again, right? And, uh, you know, you might have to overcharge if you throw your hive away. So, like, for example, you're on plate one, but your teammate on plate two, or maybe let's just say even plate four needs heals. Alright, you're going to throw your hive. Uh, you know, get ready, you shoot it. Okay, you're going to jam. And then you're going in the back to do damage. You would leave it, and you would overcharge. Blow up your hive. And just drones will come out, boom, and wait for that debuff. And you drop it as a accordion and get your hive balls back. Pick your hive up, you know, that's pretty much it. Other than that, it's just doing whatever little help you can, but you're basically keeping your team alive as needed. And you call the plates. And that is pretty much how to jam on Razorback. It sounds a lot easier than it is sometimes, it just depends on your group. If your overwatches are not strong, it's going to be a struggle no matter what you're doing. But the biggest thing I could tell you is if you have to kill Boomer, you get behind him and you shoot him right in the ass. It's going to be somewhere right here. And if you have to, you switch your pistols and, you know, finish him. Here we are in Iron Horse, second boss control room. This is the build that I've kind of messed around with and I think it's a pretty decent build and I'd like to share it with you guys. Now, you might be wondering why I'm running the sharpshooter. Basically, the reason I'm running it is for the duration mods and, you know, the drone, 15% duration. And you could use scan range, but I just use health and you know, armor repair. Use your restorer hive. It's got healing repair charges and health. And the build I use is two pieces of future initiative for that 30% repair skill. Put repair skills on everything. Even mod repair skills. I'm using two pieces of Elp Summit. Uh, talents I'm using are unbreakable, 
and adrenaline rush. Now, as long as you got repair skills and all that, that a second attribute doesn't necessarily matter. I just went with armor region because it's some of the pieces I got that were rolled there. You could slap on some hazard protection. It's not going to really make a big difference. But what I'm doing is I'm, you know, I'm stacking as much heals as I can. So the incoming repair is going to help me. You know, the armor region, the heals, the heals I'm doing to myself is going to help. The help summits already got repair skills. Make the skills the drone last longer. And you know, I'm using the BTSUs to be able to overcharge if need be. Your weapons really don't matter because there's not much you're going to be shooting. And uh, these are just what I picked up. And, you know, flashbang, just in case, you know, heavies come inside the room for some reason. Um, so that's kind of my build. And as you can see when you look at the drone, it's healing for, you know, 138k, almost 139. And that's pretty, that's pretty decent. So, what do you do when you're up here, right? Uh, these switches here control the doors, you know, Alpha. Alpha's over here, and Bravo is like directly underneath me, and Charlie's over, over there. Depending on how your group does this, most of the time, you pretty much just stick on the Alpha switch. Um, what's going to happen is the tank will be on A side. You know, you'll be pushing and holding this to keep the door open, and he's going to read you some codes. Uh, these are the screens, okay? So, if they do it by numbers, this is screen 1, screen 2, screen 3, screen 4, screen 5, and screen 6. If they do it by letters, it's uh, F, P, C, and then it's R, M, and they would say like hashtag 45 or just numbers. However you want to do it. Because down on the bottom, where B is, there's a little ticker that, re that the codes come off of. The tank only needs the first letter. So if he knows the letters, he could just, you know, if he just wants to give you a letter and you figure it out, or if he wants to tell you what screen it is, you could do it that way. So I mean, that's pretty much what you're doing in here. You need a set of five different codes first one starts it, and then you need four of them to fill it. It goes 25, 50, 75, 100. Once it reaches 100%, this crucible control thing, it unlocks. And you can, you're going to have to move it three separate times. And you'll have to let, you have to go back here, you know, you hit the button, to, it raises the crucible up, and you see these like yellow and black marks, those are the brakes. They need to be destroyed, and then you know you have to hold this open. So usually the tank, or it could be a DPS guy, could you know just depend on whoever you want to do it. Uh, DPS guys are quicker. The tank, you know, just takes a little bit longer. But usually he'll, you know, while he's doing the weak points, he'll have to shoot the rockets at the back tank there. So just like I said, depends on how you want to do it. But um, that's like the gist of it, right? So. How do you know when rockets are coming? The first one, if you guys are moving through this, like you get about 50%, it's a good mark that they'll be coming soon because you won't be seeing it. It'll, he'll be The tank will be facing this way. But after that first one, you look at the barrel right there, it'll slowly start to raise up. Once it's fully at its peak, then rockets will be coming pretty soon after that. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. The other thing you're going to have to watch is, you know, Pfizer himself will more than likely just kind of hang up here a lot. He chucks fire grenades in here. Uh, so the second he starts to move, he usually goes this way, and he'll run back to Nova. you got to make sure that your tank is not inside, because he'll die instantly. And just uh, that's especially important when he's running to go get that water cannon. There's one there. And there's also a water cannon there. But since we do, we shoot the rockets out of Alpha, everything's pretty much done on Alpha side. We don't even worry about Charlie's side. Just to try and make it a little easier. Now, the water downstairs, right? There's three switches on Alpha, two switches on Bravo, two switches on Charlie. We want to get, you know, the sign says 80 to 85 or something like that. We want to try to get 90 to 95. 
because when, once we send the water, this thing starts coming down backwards. It's going to be locked until the right pressure is there, and then you just push and hold square. It sends the water down to the cannon. Tank squirts it on the tank. It ends up looking like that. You know, after you've moved this and you've dumped the lava, then you pretty much get to Bravo, let the tank in, let them cool off, make sure everyone piles up in there, and then they DPS them. But as you're working, as you're working, right? As long as nobody is inside there, he will break this glass window. Once that happens, the shutters, they slam down. And you're trapped in here. That's when you can pop your drone. Now some people don't like the drone because, you know, it's kind of quirky. It takes a little bit to get to you. Sometimes it can get stuck on stuff, like when you drop your hive. For some reason, it might attach itself there without you doing it. So you gotta double tap it, bring it back. The problem that happens with this thing is, as you can see, I called it over and it's still there. You just really gotta pay attention to where it's at. And you're constantly moving from here. Like if you take those sharp, sharp, sharp quarters, it has a good chance of getting stuck. But if you just kind of, you know, move more like right angles, <laughs> it's got a better chance to stay with you. And then another thing to pay attention to is your hive. If you put your hive right here, and then you're on this side, your hive cannot see you, and it won't heal you. So what you have to do is kind of drop it somewhere around here. Because then when you go to do this, it can see you. When you're over here, it's right behind you. And it's the same thing for when you go to the water. You could drop it right here. And that way you can be on the switch when you need to. It's right there. And you could leave it there. And then you can get back on the switches. Now as you're up here, your drone will slowly, the duration will slowly run out. You know. And that's why you need the BTSU gloves, because you could do this. You break your drone. And then you overcharge your hive. Get your skill back, put it back on. You got a super drone, and you just you know do what you got to do on the doors. Let your hive recharge. Once it hits 36, drop it again. That is pretty much the rotation and what you need to do up here. Now, when you're calling symbols, you only have to worry about black cup, cracked cup, white cup. Sometimes they call it a full cup, or this one an empty cup. And then there's a belt, an arrow. You don't have to worry about platform, toxic substance, or flammable material, but you will have to worry about the hooks. And it could be any combination of, like these guys, it could be doubled. You just have to watch what's on the screen and call the right symbols. And that is all you gotta do. This next part is the position for the key boxes, right? Normally, you won't see them open like this. They'll be shut. But they're always on the left-hand side. So someone would get the key, they put it in the crane over here, and then there's three different spots. That's one. I'll show you the other two in just a sec here. But they all have to be done about the same time. And then these lights turn from red to green. In the middle, what I usually do is I put my back up against the, the lights here. And then as you can see, if you look over there, you can see above that crossbar. So you kind of line that up. And then you can, if you come forward a little bit, you can use that part and just go over to it patch it up. Oops. You see how I have my crosshairs? And then when it's ready, you know, three, two, one, the keys in, boom. You got like a pretty big um, gap to hit it. You know, if you're back farther, as long as, you know, if you go all the way back, it's basically just like 
you line it with that in the bottom and as long as you hit just a little bit below that like in between those it's a good way to line it up and then up here I'm gonna shoot this little thing and climb up and it's up here this one's probably the easier one too there's that yellow cable there's the pipe it's right in between Next part is 100% uh, hazard, third boss, Oops. third boss iron horse. Yeah. 100% hazard. So how to get there, right? You need one piece of y'all. It does not have to be the hollow man, it's just the one that I got. And Yal only comes out of the dark zone. The other two the other components are three five elevens. And then you get two Sescas. And you basically just put hazard protection on everything. Ideally, uh, this piece has like armor regen instead of explosive resistance. And with the Sescas it's really tough, but instead of weapon damage you want the armor there with two blue or two blues just like that. Uh, this is like an optimized piece and I'm just using the death grips if you don't have them just you know any 511s as long as they got these rolls on them and it's the same thing with you know, this I'm just using adrenaline rush and vanguard shield if you want to do a little bit more damage you can use a crusader shield and I like the emeline's guard just because if you kill stuff more armor regen Scorpio is a good you know, backup and TDI card just for the reviver. Now you can switch a few things around. You could use the Liberty, you know, you could use uh, oops, Bulwark Shield. And these pieces, um, they're interchangeable. Like if you have a Yaw knee pads and a good 511 mask, you can switch them around. The pieces do not matter what order they go in, it's just the brand sets. As long as you got two Seska, three 511, one Yaw. Does not matter how you put it together, but you definitely want Vanguard, and there's a lot of different talents to choose from. Adrenaline Rush, uh, let me see what else is in here. You could do an opportunistic buff. You know, you could do protector. Let's see if I got that in here somewhere. Um, well, yeah, you could do protector, drone rush. Those are probably the two, two best ones. Or opportunistic if you don't have somebody using that. And people use this position a couple different ways. Uh, the easiest way is that they're the ones down here pushing buttons because the, the boss comes out and he'll he will clock whoever is over here and he'll hit him pretty hard if it you know you don't get decoys or anything on the door so you probably want your tank taking those damages but if you don't run it that way the tank is usually the one that does diagnostics you know he gets up the chain he pushes the button up there and he counts the cogs. So there's a couple different ways, but I'm just showing the builds for now. Inventory. And your weapon, it can your weapons can be whatever you really want them to be. And I used to use this Utero of Preservation. You, know, you could even use well, in sync or something if you want to do more damage. But you need to stay alive, so whatever it takes um, you know even when the final part when you're trying to kill the boss if you need to switch your shield to the bulwark just so you can stay alive you know you can do that or um, you know you won't want to use your reviver use a decoy depends on your you know your group but that's the basis of how to put it and you can definitely put protection from elites you don't need any other kind of resistance mods because you already have 100% hazard. 
You could maybe try armor and kill, but you're not really going to be killing a whole lot of ads. But that's the basis breakdown. You know, and the you want to be a demolitionist as well because you get 20% burn resistance and just that explosive, like, unbreakable thing because the grenaders can still hit you pretty hard. It's a good talent to run. If not, you could try doing it on a firewall just because you're always going to be close to something and you give your team that extra damage buff. And if your armor breaks, you set stuff on fire, it can buy you some time. Those are really the two main options. Some people may even try to run like a tactician and instead of a reviver hive, you use the artificer hive to keep healing your shield. You can do it that way. Um, this is just kind of like an easy way to do it. There's um, two other ways to kind of set this up. Uh, I don't know if I have any of the pieces on it, but the Eclipse, I want to set that. The Eclipse Protocol, you'd have to run three of them, and it gives you a big chunk. I don't know if it's like 30% hazard protection. You could do that, but you're kind of sacrificing a lot of things. Um, or you could do, you know, f a couple, uh, you could do a four piece True Patriot. It'd just be armor, hazard protection. And then the other two pieces could be, like, uh, could be Seska, could be a, a Yal, could be, you know, some sort of mix of whatever to get you get extra um, resistances. And then you might have to mod like ensnare resist or shock resist or burn resist or whatever. But those are like the two main, three main ways you could do it. Alright, we're still on the third boss, and what I wanted to cover is that skill belts. Um, a lot of teams tend to use skills to help cover sectors, um, three different areas in the fight. This was one that I threw together. It's a true Patriot skill build. Um, I'm using the capacitor, the harmony with perfect NSYNC, TDI carrier, future perfection. And I'm rocking, rocking the technician. Now I could change one of these yellows to a red or a blue or whatever, but the basis is you want skill damage with the True Patriot. It's not optimized, but you can see some of them. You know, like this one's pretty rough. I got a lot of work to do on that, but I would definitely use a vibrant piece. Um, and hazard protection could be a lot of different things, but it's the basis is you're just trying to stack as much skill skill damage as possible. And then I would definitely mod the skill duration on this one. And the reason being is you want these to last as long as you can, because without them, uh, the ads could run, be running wild. And I mod them damage, uh, scan range on the striker drone, duration, duration, damage. And then I'm pairing it with the memento, just because this can be, it's like you want it to go as quick as possible, but you will be killing a decent amount of ads, and these stacks can help keep you alive, because uh, the healer, uh, the healer gets pretty busy during this fight, it's got a lot of things to do, so having like armor regen, the skill efficiency, bonus armor, weapon damage, it's a pretty good piece to run, you just have to be careful going around getting your stacks. Like I said, because it's with the tactician, you could change any one of the yellows to something else, blue or red. It's just an example of a build. Um, here's an easier, here's, it's kind of the same thing, a little different. What I would do is probably switch this again. You, know, you could use test subject, harmony, capacitor. But what I do here is I got, this is a force multiplier build. Three pieces of honey you. I think I'm using this one, I got spark on it. You could do glass cannon. Only problem with this is that this build requires you to keep shooting a lot. So you gotta be careful if you're gonna get hit. You got my wyvern wear, Murakami for duration, and then I'm using the wait form. Because it's just gonna keep buffing these guys back and forth. So it's not too much different. It's just an all yellow 
you know, you'll get better stats or haste. But that uh, True Patriot buff is pretty cool too. And then, is there another one? Oh yeah, the, um, uh, let me show you something with the rigor. If I have a piece here, I think it's the backpack. So you can you could do it too with like a four-piece rigor set, because but you would definitely want this backpack. You do the same thing: skill damage, skill duration on all the pieces. Uh, well, you know, depending on which ones you use. This is hates the backpack. The uh, you could do the chest piece too, but it doesn't have to. I just boost the boost the buff. But this isn't a bad set. You just break your skills right before they're about to run out and get them instantly back. And you could use you know you could use a waveform. You could even you know yeah that's probably what I would do. And just you know wyvern make a wyvern somewhere and that'd probably be your setup. Yeah, that's just some thoughts um, for skill builds right there. I just wanted to show everybody why we throw grenades on this table because this ginger red man, he's normally not there. But he does exist and here's proof again. That's what usually happens when you throw a grenade. Oof, bye bye ginger red man. Here we are at the fourth boss, Marzova and Iron Horse. And this is an example of a tank build that you can use to keep her pinned up against the door and disrupt her. If you don't have the Ravenous, it will be challenging but not impossible. But here's a pretty basic setup for it. Um, you definitely need the Ravenous. Your other two weapons don't really matter so much. Specialization could be Demolitionist. I like the firewall just because it's given extra damage to teammates. Um, I'm running to Foundry Bulwark. I'm just using armor, armor regen, all my pieces. I'm using the forge. I'm trying to get my shield health as much as I can. Perfect bank card. And here's my shield health, 16 million. And just buy as much shields. But this is another key part of it is the EMP sticky. This is how it works, right? Let's say you, you, got, you did your first phase. They took down all the rocket, all the mortars. All right, that last one's coming down. We're coming in here, all right? And this is like the bush method. These are some good landmarks. You can see that sign right there. You can kind of get on that sign. You're going to pop the shield and just sit there while everyone's piling in the bush. After the gun sprays left and right, you know, you're moving out, you're running as fast as you can. You're going to get about right here. You're going to start aiming that sticky towards like the doorknob. Because when she comes out and opens that door, you can tag her. She'll walk down about right there. And when she switches weapons, you just you blow it up. You stagger her one right, one left. And then you just get right up in her face with your shield. And she'll stay there the whole time. If you do it right. That's all there is to it. And then when she drops down, you're, you're watching her. She has like a pattern. Sometimes she'll... Um, she'll just keep shooting you with like her... Looks like a rock and roll kind of shotgun. And she does a couple of things. And she'll switch hands. And you just do the same thing. One right. One left. Well, you have to. When you're close, you have to kind of aim over and just get back in her face. Proc Vanguard as much as you can. But some of the f other different phases, she has to click a little button to make this minigun move either to, you know, that would be the left side and that would be the right side. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can pin her. Inventory. And this is just a pretty standard healer build for Iron Horse. Uh, I like using the designated hitter. It's got perfect reformation. You only need to land one headshot and that boss stays up for 15 seconds. 
Scorpio is a really great weapon to use, paired with the Survivalist, and an Alp Summit backpack with Opportunistic. This is the perfect backpack, and then you're always going to use the BTSU gloves, and then you get your four piece. The chest piece is the center because of the extra ground control buff it gives 25%. Now, there's a couple different things that you can do when you're you know, putting whatever attribute you want. Some people just put all repair skills on everything. You can do that. I like to put more skill haste. And my reason is, I tend to run with a lot of newer people. And I would rather get my skills back to be able to throw out more heals than to just throw a huge, huge heal. Because if you look right now, my armor is sitting at like 726k. And it repairs for almost a million. You know, and then it heals about 200k. So, you know, it kind of depends uh, how you want to do it. You can try it both ways, see what you think is comfortable. But the mods are pretty easy. You know, definitely want to heal mod. Here, you got a couple choices. You can do skill haste. You can make bigger clouds. You can make your clouds last longer, or you can just have extra ammo. A lot of different ways to do it. But your hives, pretty easy. It's healing, health, and then repair charge. But you definitely want this, and you're marking targets constantly with the shotgun. If you hit anything with this, uh, you can throw fire grenades on it. And then you, know, you can mod. Like I said, you can mod haste and repair skills, and you can put it on your gear however you want. Um, you know, it's just an example. If for some reason you don't have these chest pieces, you know, um, if you don't have the chest piece, you could still do either another Alp Summit or a Mirakami. Either way, you could look for Empathetic Resolve. Um, you know, this still work, and you would just have to drop the PTSU gloves and run the shoot your gloves. You know, it's only if you're starting out and you don't have the pieces. But once you get the pieces, this is pretty much what you want. It's ideal, you don't want to use safeguard. Um, this damage buff is just, uh, it's too good to pass out for your team. You know, especially when you pair it with the Scorpio. And you pair it with the survivalists thing where you add you know, status effects and do extra damage. You're giving your team a huge damage increase. <laughs>